to the Viking Home Companion. And this story is one that I call Freya's Wedding. It's actually based on a Norse myth known as Thurm's Saga. You know, things were pretty noisy in Asgard the other day. Tor was a ranting and a raging, a rooting and a hollering. He was kicking over boxes, ripping doors off their hinges. And nobody was really paying a whole lot of attention at first, you know, because Thor's a pretty excitable fella. Does this kind of thing all the time, dear. But when he didn't settle down, finally everybody got together and asked him what was going on. He said, well, I've lost my hammer. And of course, some smarty pants had to speak up and said, well, where was the last place you had it? He said, well, if I could remember the last place I had it, I wouldn't be looking for it now, did I? Everybody had a good laugh at that. Finally, you know, Odin spoke up and he said, you know, not too much longer, we're going to have this big party called Ragnarok, and it ain't going to be nearly as much fun if Thor don't have his hammer. So they got together to help him look for it. They turned Asgard upside down and gave it a good shake. And nothing. And Thor was mighty disappointed. I mean, after all, that always works with the couch. So anyway, they were about to give up, and they noticed this big bird circling around overhead, and they were all going to run and duck for cover. When it let out this big squawk, and it goes, Oh, you're looking for Thor's hammer, huh? Well, I know where it is. Thurm, the king of the Frost Giants, has it. Says he won't give it back unless Freya agrees to become his wife. Well, Thor looked over, and Freya says, Well, go get your wedding dress. Let's get it going. i got to get my hammer back. She looked him right in the eye and said, Maybe you better just get another hammer. Now, I have to give, you know, some credit here. They did try. They brought out a bunch of hammers for him to look at. He picked up the first one, he looked at it, and said, Craftsman. Nope, too small. He picked up the next hammer, and he looked at it, and said, Stanley. Never heard of him. He picked up the next one, he looked at it, and said, Taiwan. Nope, too cheap. He picked up the next one, he looked at it, and said, Pentagon. Nope, too expensive. He picked up the last one, he looked at it, and said, Dead Blow. Hmm. You know, I uh, kind of like the name, but... Nah, it's just not quite right. He tossed it back over his shoulder, and it just so happened that he did that, that Balder was a-walking by. Ricocheted off of him and landed over on Odin's foot, who was not impressed. So then he finally, he looks over at Loki and he says, You know, you're the crafty one. You come up with a way to get Thor's hammer back. Well, Loki looked over at Thor, then he looked over at Freya, Looked over at Thor, looked over at Freya, and got this big smile on his face and says, Well, if Freya's what Thurm wants, Freya's what Thurm gets. Freya was not happy with that answer. She was about to walk him upside the head there, but he goes, No, 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 you know, that's not quite what I mean, you see. We'll just take one of your dresses, put it on Thor, and let him go get his hammer back. Everybody had a good laugh at that one, all except Thor, of course. And it was just lucky for Loki that Balder and Tyr were standing by, and each one of them got a hold of one of Thor's arms and were holding him back there. But you know, Loki just couldn't pass up the chance to tease Thor, so he standing right in front of him, just snickering away, wiggling his ears and his nose at him. Finally, Odin got this big smile on his face, and he said, You know, that's actually not such a bad idea, and since it's yours, you get to go with it. Now, this didn't bother Loki a whole lot. He just went on back to his hall, changed into a dress, and being a shapeshifter, he just turned himself into a villain. Pretty good looking villain. On his way back where everybody else was, there were three cat calls, two wolf whistles, and a marriage proposal. At least till they figured out just who it was they were looking at. So then they, you know, brought out a whole bunch of Freya's dresses, and they ran into the first really big problem. Because, you know, you can only let the seams out so far before there just aren't any seams left, and none of these dresses was going to fit on Thor. So they had to make a whole new dress. Took three bolts of cloth, but they finally got it covered, more or less. That was when they ran into their next big problem, see? Because no matter how much any of them scratched their hair or racked their brains, they couldn't come up with a good enough excuse to explain to the Frost Giants just how come Freya had a big red beard. So they brought out a razor. And they passed it around and around and around and then finally all looked over at Tyr, who is the bravest of the gods, and he looked right back at him and said, you know what, I've only got one good hand left and I intend to keep it. But you know, finally Loki spoke up. He said, you know, down there on Midgard, the humans have this custom that when the villain's going to get married, they put a veil over her head. So that's what they did. It took another bolt of cloth, but they finally got him covered from head to toe. 
And they took Freya's cloak of feathers, put it on his shoulders, hung her necklace on him, took her belt of gold, put it around his waist, and hung some keys off of it. And then him and Loki got up into his chariot, and off they went to Jotunheim. Now to say that the king of the Frost Giants was overjoyed would be something of an understatement, because he never expected them to give him Freya for his bride. And truth be told, having Thor's hammer is pretty poor compensation for not having the goddess of love and beauty in your bed. So he was a pretty happy fellow when they showed up, and he said, well, let's get the wedding feast started, let's get on up into the hall here. So you got the king of the frost giants sitting up at the head of the table, right next to him is Thor, Freya, and right next to him is Loki, the handmaiden. Now the frost giants, though, were just a little amazed at how much food and drink disappeared under the veil of the dainty bride of the frost giant king. One side of beef, two roast pigs, and three barrels of mead disappeared underneath that veil. But you know, Loki, he's a pretty smooth fella. He just looked up there and said, yeah, You know, ever since she heard she was going to become your bride, Freya's been so excited she hasn't been able to eat or drink for seven days and seven nights. So it's not all that surprising that she'd be hungry and thirsty. That frost giant just puffed up with pride to hear that she was that excited to be his bride. He figured he'd bend on down there and give her a big kiss on the cheek. And he got a hold of that veil and got one good look into those bloodshot blue eyes staring back at him. And he jumped back and said, Yup, but yeah, but he, I never seen such bloodshot angry eyes. But you know, Loki, he's a really smooth fella. He just looked up there and he said, yeah, You know, ever since she heard she was going to become your bride, Frey's been so excited she hasn't been able to sleep for seven days or seven nights. So it's not all that surprising that her eyes would be really red. And if that frost giant could have puffed up anymore, he'd have exploded all over that hall. And he figured if she was that excited, he wasn't going to keep her waiting anymore, yeah, sure. He said, let's get the priest out here and get this wedding started. But then Loki looked up and said, well, you're going to have to bring out Thor's hammer, and then the two of you will say your vows on the hammer, and then we'll send it back to Asgard to seal the deal. Well, bring out the hammer. A few minutes later, Three big burly frost giants, just a heaving and a strain and a huffing and a puffing, come carrying that hammer out, and then lift it up and lay it on the end of the table, and Thor had had enough. He grabbed a hold of that hammer, started whipping it around, he ripped that veil off of his head. Now, have you ever seen what happens when you scare a cat? Let me tell you, frost giants are just capable of going nine different directions all at the same time without ever leaving the spot they're standing on. Not that it did them any good. Not a whole lot of frost giants made it out of the hall that night. And anytime anybody else gets the broad idea about wanting to steal Thor's hammer, well, they just tell them the story about Freya's wedding and they give up on that idea right quick. Yeah, sure, you betcha.